welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the A-hole stories and if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. Now if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get into this first Am I the A-hole story. This says, Am I the A-hole for asking my girlfriend's friend to pay for her own food? Um, no. <laughs> Mind you, as, as as we speak, my best friend is staying in my house with her daughter, my niece, and occasionally we will buy them food, but also occasionally she will buy us food. I mean, just yesterday we were at Disney on Ice and she decided to buy us a pretzel, with, which probably cost her $25. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but y'all know how concession stands get at events like that. Um, but yeah, no, we, we keep it pretty equal. Uh, we've been cooking a lot at home, so she's sending me money for groceries. Like, she does not just mooch, but we do kind of pass the buck back and forth and we'll buy her, you know, two, three meals and she'll buy us one meal and... Yeah, neither one of us are taking advantage like it sounds this OP's girlfriend's friend is doing, but let's see what the story says. My girlfriend and I have been together for four years and lived together for two. My girlfriend's friend, we'll call her Sarah, is at our house at least four days a week and often more. I wish she would let us have some space, but that's a battle I've lost. Yikes. I typically buy the groceries for our house and I notice that every single night Sarah is over, she eats whatever we cook but never contributes anything. In the past two months, she has contributed one box of Kraft macaroni and cheese and a 12 pack of Pepsi. She's had 20 plus dinners at this point. Yeah, no, my friend, no. <laughs> one time she came here and didn't buy any groceries but that's because that was her birthday gift is I like went and did I pick her up from her house or picked her up halfway. She lives uh, one state over from me, um, about four hours away, three and a half, something like that. So, yeah, no, her her birthday gift was for me to bring her here. And like, you know, like this was her birthday gift was was her little mini vacation at my house. So, yeah, she didn't pay for any food, but we just we just ate at home and, and this was, you know, agreed upon. It was like a week and not months on end. So bit of a different story. I've got a buddy coming over tonight who always contributes when we eat together. Sarah is also going to be there. I'm buying steaks for dinner because I work hard for my damn ribeye and she's currently sitting at my house with the expectation of eating it. I called my girlfriend and said I'd buy the steaks, shrimp, and wine, but I'd like everyone to pitch in. Obviously not my girlfriend, mostly just want Sarah to pitch in. Am I the a-hole? No. I mean, is she... The poor homeless broke kid that lives down the street and parents can't afford to feed her like I I don't I don't understand why she can't contribute money for her own damn food consumption I'm super not understanding <laughs> Um, definitely not the a-hole. Let's see what the comments say. Not the a-hole. Sarah is taking advantage of you both in order to save her money by getting a free dinner. Your girlfriend should set limits and start to demand her to contribute since your home is not a free restaurant. Yeah, this is on a soup kitchen, ma'am. <laughs> And it is not only about groceries, but you also pay other bills to be able to cook like water and electricity. It is time to have a talk with Sarah. I bet she will visit less in the moment you ask her to start paying her part. Yeah, I'm guessing her visits will slow down as soon as she has to start paying for them. Freeloader. Next comment says, he already lost the battle of her being over every night. Don't think girlfriend has his back at all. Yeah, for real. I mean, it just seems like Sarah needs to take a step out of their relationship overall. Uh, I feel for this guy because it's like he's fighting two. It's two against one here because his girlfriend's clearly on Sarah's side. I mean, how is the girlfriend like not concerned at all? Does she not do any of the grocery buying? He said he does the grocery shopping, right? I typically buy the groceries for our house. Yeah. So she's not even seeing like how much money is spent on providing meals for three people every week. That's just crazy. And, and, and being Sarah and just coming over and like expecting to be fed every night. Bitch, who raised you? 
not the a-hole whatsoever. You better not give her a single piece of steak, not even the freaking steak fat until she contributes some money. That's my opinion. I'd like to know what you all think about that in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for not wanting my in-laws to hold my newborn because they were in sweaty gym clothes? Ew, like don't even touch me when you're sweaty, <laughs> let alone hold my baby. Let's see what the story says. My in-laws came straight from the gym to see my two week old newborn. And after they left, I mentioned to my husband that I didn't like them holding our baby while in gym clothes, but I didn't know how to tell them delicately. Today they came over once again in sweaty clothes straight from the gym and my husband asked that they change so we can prevent our baby from getting sick my mother-in-law said that it was ignorant on my part to think she would get sick and that she felt uncomfortable with these kinds of restrictions i've given them I'm having a hard time letting go of this interaction. On one hand, I understand that it may seem like an exaggeration to other people, but regarding my daughter, I feel whatever I ask of them should be respected. Yeah, no, when I had my first son, like you weren't even allowed at my house unless you had been vaccinated for like all the things that you should be vaccinated against when it comes to a baby. Like... I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about your sensibilities. I care about keeping my child safe when their immunity is next to nothing. So suck it up buttercup or go visit a different grandchild. Let's see what the comments say. Ew, no, they just touched all the public gym equipment, which people sometimes wipe down and sometimes don't. Have you seen the stories about people getting hand, foot, mouth from public places? Did they even wash their hands when they came over? They need to shower and change before coming over. I don't think that's unreasonable, even if you didn't have a baby. Personally, I think it's gross when your spouse comes home from the gym all sweaty and sits on the couch, lol. Yeah, gross. Like I said, don't even touch me. Like, don't even give me like a like a, like a quick side hug when you're all sweaty and gross. And definitely don't hold my baby when you're all sweaty and gross. Have some common sense. Next says, I go to the gym. The first thing I do when I get home is shower and change. I wouldn't think of asking to hold a baby until I have done this. All the gym equipment has been touched by a ton of people. Not everyone wipes the equipment down or has clean hands. Once when I was working out, I rubbed my eye, ended up with pink eye. And that's on germs. <laughs> I don't think so. You were not coming into my house, sweaty, disgusting, and grimy from the gym and expecting to be all over my little tiny two week old infant who has zero immunity and zero protection against your sweaty germs. I think not. <laughs> I wanna know what you think about that one in the comments, but I believe they're not the a-hole whatsoever. I hope the husband is for real having their back on this because the in-laws seem overbearing. Let me know what you think and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole? My mom got ma mad at me because I refused to give my cousin my prescription meds. <laughs> you get a 30 or a 90 day supply for you to take them every day. Or, you know, maybe it's, you know, uh, like my husband, he has some certain anxiety pills that are supposed to be taken twice a day. But like, yeah, you, you get given... They specific the, the specific amount of pills that you were supposed to take in the time until you can refill that prescription. So why would you be expected to give them to someone else? So that you could go without the meds that you were prescribed? I don't think so. Let's see what the story says. I suffer from PTSD, panic attacks, and anxiety. My cousins lately has also had bad anxiety and panic attacks. My mom came into my room and grabbed my visceral to give to my cousin but i told her not to yes he has had anxiety meds before but decided to get off them she got mad and yelled at me and told me it would be fine and that she was the medical professional not me she's a nurse so a nurse is depriving her daughter of her prescription medication and without any kind of diagnosis giving them to another family member honey that's not legal then she left she also said it wasn't a big deal because visceral isn't any worse than a drug like benadryl 
okay, but Benadryl is over the counter and you don't need a prescription. And this Vistaril, whatever it is, is a prescription, meaning you need a doctor's authorization in order to have it. So it's not like Benadryl, because if it was, it would, be, it would be over the counter. It would just be in the aisles at CVS and you could pick it up your damn self. I don't know, she's been getting on my last nerve today. I just don't feel comfortable giving my cousin a drug that was prescribed to me by a psychiatrist. I don't know what effect it might have on him. Yeah, you don't know what else he's taking. You don't know what else is going on in his body. Like what if it causes an even worse reaction? Like, no, absolutely not. I don't, I, I know he's struggling and having trouble sleeping, but he's going to schedule a doctor's appointment soon to try and get back on his medication. So am I the hole? No, your cousin's medication literally has nothing to do with you and your mom stealing your prescribed, your legally prescribed medications from you is not only unethical, but illegal. And the fact that she's a nurse is troubling. <laughs> Let's see what the comments say. It is against the law for your mom to give someone prescription meds true next says which she should know as a nurse true next says she could be brought up to the bon i'm guessing as board of nurses of her state for this true next says she should be brought up to the board of nurses of her state for this also 100 percent true this is illegal this is not okay this is unethical and as a medical professional, you'd think that she would know better. But I guess when it's her family, she doesn't have to follow rules and laws and restrictions and like common sense. I don't think so. Keep your meds, hide them if you need to. And maybe tell your doctor. If your mom's not listening, maybe tell your doctor. I mean, I wouldn't want to have my mom lose her job. But like if she's just giving away my freaking prescription medicine that I need for myself. Yeah, I'm gonna do something about it that's how i feel i would like to know what you think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story this says am i the evil for not wanting to translate in spanish to our spanish-speaking patients reddit says they're not the a-hole let's see what we think all right y'all i'm a medical assistant working with multiple multiple medical assistants and nurses i just started this job about a month ago and i never disclosed that i spoke spanish nor was it a requirement to get the job i work for a big corp so they pay for phone slash video translators most of my fellow ma's are spanish speaking as well and there's a few of them that will not translate but there are two that will of course we all speak a little bit of spanglish to each other at times i don't get paid for speaking spanish but i will translate if it's a patient that i'm rooming because it would be ridiculous if i use a translator there's been two times where two different nurses asked me if i can call a spanish patient spanish speaking patient basically translating for the nurses nothing to do with my job and both times i've said i'm not qualified and they just stare for a second in disbelief but then ask another ma and i sit there and question if that was rude or not mainly because the nurses are for the most part nice and sweet am i the evil for not wanting to translate because i never agreed to otherwise i would have asked for a raise highly doubt they would approve this just because the company pays certified translators yeah, no, it is not your job. And just because you can speak Spanish with your family doesn't mean that you know proper medical terms. And what if you were to translate something incorrectly to a patient and there was adverse side effects, you would now be held responsible for that because you were the one that said it to them? No, 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 no. You do not get paid to be a translator and they have translators. These nurses are just being lazy. So no, you are not the a-hole. Tell those nurses to get bent. I don't care how nice and sweet they are. They're being lazy and not doing their jobs properly. Let's see what the comments say. Not the a-hole. There's a reason why interpreting is a qualified job. I'm a professional translator slash interpreter and I've done a lot of work in hospitals. Once a nurse insisted that she spoke enough French to assist during a French patient surgery under local anesthesia and actually kicked me out of the operating theater. The poor man's blood pressure shot up dangerously because he couldn't understand a word of what she was saying. And on top of it, she wasn't actually assisting the surgeon the way she should have. She got a stern talking to from the surgeon and I was eventually called into the operating theater to help calm the patient down. Yeah, I, just because you can speak it 
to friends and family does not mean that you can speak it in a professional capacity. Those could potentially be two different things. Long story short, I'm in no way implying that you don't speak Spanish well enough, but my point is you have other duties. And as I said, interpreting is a qualified job for a reason, especially in matters of health and safety. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. You, you don't want to be held, held liable, not to mention the fact that because this is not your job in your dis job description, I, I wonder if it went to insurance and, and your company was sued, how your company would feel about covering you for doing a job that you were not assigned or asked to do because they have people who are specifically hired and certified and capable of doing that job. No, absolutely not the a-hole. I don't care how nice they are. They're being lazy and they're not doing their jobs correctly. I would like to know what you think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 200 Am I the whole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.